A couple of weeks ago, I made a video about what engineering exams are like here in Canada, and it did pretty well. But on that video and a bunch of my other previous videos, I got comments saying this is so easy compared to the engineering exams that they have to take in India. Apparently, what we learn in our third or fourth year of university in engineering, they learn in high school. I'm a recent mechanical engineering graduate from the University of Waterloo in Canada, and I've taken my fair share of tricky exams. So in this video, I brought some Indian engineering exams because I want to see if they're actually hard or if it's just a weird flex that they're bragging about. The most popular Indian engineering exam that I'm going to be going through in this video was called the JEE, which is an abbreviation that stands for Joint Entrance Exam. After doing a lot of research and from my understanding, the Joint Entrance Exam has two stages, the JEE Main and the JEE Advanced. You start off by doing the JEE Main and if you're able to rank among the top students, then you end up qualifying to do the JEE Advanced. But being among the top students is so hard that in 2017, out of the 1.2 million students that did the JEE exam, only 11,032 of them actually qualified and were ranked among the top students. That's less than 1%. Then if you score high enough on the JEE Advanced, you may qualify to go to IIT, which is like the top engineering school in India. It's equivalent to MIT in the US. More specifically though, both the JEE Main and the JEE Advanced have two papers. And within each paper, there are three parts, physics, chemistry, and math. These are the physics concepts you're tested on and their respective marks. These are the chemistry concepts that you're tested on and their respective marks. And these are the math concepts you're tested on and their respective marks. Each paper is about three hours long and today I brought the JEE Advanced Paper 1 that contains both physics, chemistry, and math to see if it's actually hard or if it's just overrated. Let's start off by having a look at the physics part of this exam. This part has a total of three sections within it, section 1, section 2, and section 3, and a total of 18 questions. The first section has six questions and is a multiple choice where only one answer is correct. The second section also has a total of six questions, but there are multiple correct answers in this multiple choice. The third section also has six questions, but it's not multiple choice. So far everything seems fine, but the grading system is absolutely ridiculous because the first question has you receiving negative marks if your answer is wrong. Why would they do that? That's just so demoralizing. Then the second section also has negative marks, which is insane. At that point, there really is no point of guessing during an exam. Thankfully, I've never had any of my engineering exams give you negative marks if you get an incorrect answer. But honestly, the third section is one of the worst. It's not multiple choice, but it's a regular solving question. The issue here though is you don't get any part marks. They don't even care about the solution. They just want the correct final answer. Honestly, the question doesn't seem impossible. It's just the grading system that's just ridiculous. I genuinely think that the reason people fail this exam is because it's actually designed to fail you and it's designed to reject you. Someone could have a great solution but do a simple math error and then lose four marks just like that even though they're more than capable and more than smart enough to be able to do it. Anyways enough hating on the actual grading system let's have a closer look at some of the questions. The first one is definitely challenging because normally in physics we get questions that have a ball rolling down a ramp and that's it but here they have a hole in the ramp so it's a bit trickier. This exam is meant to be done before you enter your engineering studies in university in India but honestly, the physics in this exam is more complicated than the physics I had in my first year of engineering in Canada. However, not all questions are tricky. Some of them are definitely doable. The fifth question, for example, is pretty straightforward if you understand how the speed of light moves in various mediums. But another thing that makes this physics exam kind of tricky is that you're constantly jumping between different concepts in physics rather than just sticking to like one area or one topic. First, we're talking about kinematics and dynamics. Then we jump to magnetism, then optics, and now pressure. You know, I really like question 6 because I've seen it before and I've done more complicated versions of it in my second year thermodynamics class. Question 7 is about basic quantum physics and question 8 is about thermodynamics. For the most part, I learned how to do these questions in university, second year, and in third year. But what I don't understand is if students in India are expected to know these engineering concepts before even getting into engineering school, then what's the point of even applying to an engineering school? Anyways, question 9 is pretty simple, which is nice that after 8 confusing questions, they throw in something relatively easy. Looking at questions 10, 11, and 12, it seems that they're just trying to combine several physics concepts into one question to make it trickier. Question 13 looks to test you on rotations. Question 14 looks to test you on your knowledge of surface tension. Question 15 looks to examine your knowledge on electrostatics. Question 16 is another thermodynamics concept. And question 17 tests you on the concept of sound. 
In general, it seems like they're taking the toughest concepts in physics and only testing you on those. Like, I mean, they can throw in an easy concept, like maybe test you on conservation of energy or conservation of momentum, just to kind of make the exam a little bit more fair. Because honestly, by the looks of it, they're just trying to make it as hard as humanly possible. That being said, I think this exam is quite doable if you spend months and months actually studying and putting your head down to understand all the concepts they're expecting you to know. But if I were to rank the difficulty of this exam, I'd give it a three out of five. And that's because I truly don't understand why you would need to know such difficult physics concepts before you even get into your engineering class. I feel like you should be learning this stuff in your engineering school. But let me bring out my first year physics midterm just to compare both of them together side by side. Right off the bat, you see that my midterm doesn't cover nearly as many concepts as the JEE. I had to come in knowing kinematics, dynamics, work, and energy principles, as well as some basic understanding of springs. I definitely didn't need to know thermodynamics, electricity and magnetism, or fluids coming into my physics exam. Although I had some multiple choice questions, the majority of my questions were solving questions, and I was allowed part marks, so if I got the answer wrong, I wouldn't get a zero. At the time of doing my physics exam, I actually thought it was hard and I ended up getting an 80% on this exam and the class average was a 60%. But looking back now and comparing it to this JEE physics exam, I realized how kind of funny that is because my exam is so much easier in compared to the JEE. Let's move on to the chemistry part of this exam. Now, I am definitely better at physics than chemistry, but I'll try my best to be able to figure out these questions. Starting off again, we have negative marks for wrong answers. The questions though, I don't think they're that hard if you've done enough practice and know the formulas and equations that you need to use to solve these questions. I also noticed the questions of these exams definitely focus on extreme details of certain concepts more than you really ever need. I do think that the hardest part of this exam is the amount of information you're expected to know coming in. This is a very difficult exam for sure, especially for a high school student. A very common pattern I've seen here is they love taking simple topics and giving complex questions of those topics. Anyways, I'd give this exam a difficulty level of 4.5 out of 5 because of the amount of concepts you're expected to know coming in. But let me bring out my first year midterm exam for chemistry just to compare it to this JEE chemistry exam. Right off the bat, my exam gave me a periodic table of elements that I could use and they also gave me an equation sheet that had a bunch of the equations that I needed when solving some of the questions. I was also allowed to bring a cheat sheet to my chemistry exam which was really helpful and I doubt they were able to bring something like that to the JEE. My midterm actually had a similar structure to the JEE and that it was mainly multiple choice. The biggest difference between both though is that mine had a smaller scope of concepts I needed to know coming in. I needed to know like maybe 10 different concepts whereas the JEE seemed like students are required to know well over 50 different concepts. Seeing the JEE, I can't believe I thought that my chemistry midterm was hard when I first took it back in first year. I kind of feel ashamed to say this because I scored a 60% on my chemistry midterm which is one of my lowest grades and so comparing it to the JEE, it just... Wow, I would have bombed the JE in that case. Let's move on to math. So far, I felt that physics was doable with enough practice, chemistry was an absolute bloodbath, so I'm hoping that this math section can make up for how bad chemistry was. Okay, looking at the first few questions, the first thing that comes to mind is why? Why are you asking me this? I can solve them, but they're taking several different concepts in math and combining them together rather than just testing you on different concepts individually, which is what I'm used to. But anyways, looking at this first question, if you understand what a root is and can read these equations, you know that by definition, the following four equations have to be true. A times B equals negative 2020, A plus B equals negative 20, C times D equals 2020, and C plus D equals 20. Then you can take these equations, substitute them in this big equation, do some basic algebra manipulation, and you should get an answer. So again, the first few questions seem to be pretty doable, but the scope is huge. We start off with some pre-calc questions, then we jump into linear algebra questions in question eight. We also have a little bit of integration. It sort of feels all over the place. The first 12 questions are pretty straightforward. If you know what concept the question is testing you on, but question 13 through 18 are absolutely brutal. It's just very specific stuff that I probably learned in my first year of calculus and linear algebra courses that I just haven't used in years. So I don't know where to start, but honestly, some questions are horrendous and ugly like question 16. I mean, I thought I understood dot product and cross product pretty well, but I don't even know where to begin with this. I definitely need to review my linear algebra notes before even attempting this question, but honestly, I'd give this exam like a four out of five in terms of difficulty. Now, I really wanna compare this math exam to my engineering math exams that I've taken in university, but I really can't because this exam just covers so many different concepts. So the best I can do is compare it to both my calculus and linear algebra midterm exams from my first year of engineering. 
First of all, the biggest difference, honestly, is that my exam just has a smaller scope of stuff that you need to know, and I don't receive negative marks if I get a wrong answer. Also, I'm allowed part marks, which is a huge bonus to do well in these exams. If you notice in the JEE when I was talking about it, I didn't go through how to solve some of these questions. Mainly because I can probably only solve like half of them and it would take me a while to do so since I need to review a lot of this material since they expect you to know so much stuff in such great detail. But if you're curious to know how to solve some of these difficult questions, I'll link some videos and some solutions in the description that I found online that will kind of give you an idea of how to be able to solve some of these questions. But here are four things that I took away when comparing my Canadian engineering university exams to the Andrews exams that they take in India for engineering. First, in India, it's just so competitive and so hard to even get accepted into an engineering school, which is why they have to make their entrance exams so hard. Apparently, getting into MIT in the US is a lot easier than getting into IIT in India. Second, engineering students in India are forced to learn these engineering concepts before getting in, whereas here in Canada and the US, we learn all these engineering concepts after we get in. Third, if you're an engineering student here in Canada or in the US, I hope seeing the engineering exams in India and how brutal the grading process is, we should be thankful for how easy we have it in comparison and we should be grateful for that. Fourth, doing these engineering exams actually gave me PTSD and uh, my mind needs a little bit of rest. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, here's another video where I go over my own engineering exams in more detail, or you can check out this video where I kind of break down some of the study techniques that I used to be able to do well in school. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.